And uh, Tim, I've sent you a message to send in Connie Walker, uh, who is our next guest. Excellent. And I'm getting pinged by our programmer, so I'm going to check on the programmers. Oh, uh, wait, I don't have set up. We need set up what she has. Oh, she sent slides. <laughs> yes, <Okay. laughs> slides and video. So we need that first. <laughs> okay. Do you want me to Hi, tap Connie. dance while we're waiting for that? What's that? Shall I tap dance while we're waiting for the slides? You can tap dance behind your avatar? That's yes, not fair. that's the only way I would do it. Yeah. That's not fair. Uh, Connie, <laughs> you've probably come in muted. You need to unmute yourself up in the top right corner. That's the, uh, the Google Hangout default. So uh, can we hear you now? I hope so. <laughs> Yay, there we go. There you are. Uh, Otherwise so, we're in trouble. Um, I, I can do the PowerPoint from here if you'd like. Oh, you can. Okay, do the and I have the video here. Do you want to start by having me play the video? Sure. Why not? Okay. okay. Cool. Let me. Um, so Connie uh, has been a previous guest on Learning Space uh, from the National Optical Astronomy Observatory, and uh, we're going to be talking about the importance of of our dark skies. I'm hoping this is the right video. If not, it's probably a, a puppet. Oh, I'm muted. It's called Losing the Dark. Okay, so here we go with Losing the Dark. We live on the surface of a planet, spinning on its axis once every 24 hours. Its rhythms of day and night are embedded in the biological makeup of all life. During the day, we bathe in the glow of the sun. As night approaches, darkness takes over. It's a time to rest, to rejuvenate, to marvel at the beauty of the night. Until just over a century ago, our night skies were very dark. Now, even the wilderness is invaded by light. Our cities glow at night. Buildings are lit up. Unshielded lights blind us as we travel along our streets and roads. All these artificial lights overpower the darkness. The waste of energy is obvious, even from space. Much of that yellow glare the astronauts see comes from street lights. They produce most of the light pollution on the planet. The glare is scattered by the atmosphere creating sky glows over the landscape. We are losing the dark of night at the speed of light. Light pollution threatens the health of every living thing on Earth. Lights at night disrupt plant growth. Unshielded lights contribute to the deaths of countless land and sea animals each year. Migrating birds crash into illuminated buildings. Newly hatched sea turtles mistake the glow of electric lights for the shimmer of the ocean's surface. Bright lights at night also directly affect humans. Drivers and pedestrians temporarily blinded by poorly designed lights have suffered tragic accidents. Light pollution poses a silent threat to our health. Exposure to light at night disrupts the circadian rhythms that regulate our sleep cycles. People working at night under bright lights or living in light polluted cities face a higher risk of developing diseases such as breast and prostate cancer. Here is a night sky with typical light pollution. On a good night, only the brighter stars and planets pierce the glow.
this is what the night sky might look like if we could remove the light pollution. That faint band of light stretching across the sky is the Milky Way, our home galaxy. Because of light pollution, many people have never seen it. Astronomers know all too well the problems caused by lighting up the night. They need clear, dark skies to study the many fascinating objects in the universe. Light pollution simply washes out their view of the cosmos. Lighting up the night sky wastes money and fossil fuels. To keep a 100 watt light bulb turned on every night for a year takes the equivalent energy output from burning half a ton of coal. Multiplied by the billions of lights blazing up from Earth, the cost of energy we use to light up the night is colossal. While lighting is needed, there are some simple things we can do to ensure that it's neighborhood friendly, energy efficient, and helps preserve dark skies. We can replace light fixtures that send light up to the sky with ones that direct light down exactly where we want it. They're called fully shielded fixtures. We can also illuminate only the places that need it. And of course, we can just turn off unnecessary lights. These are smart ways to use lighting. They offer simple solutions to problems caused by light pollution. We have a choice between wasting resources by sending light to the sky or learning to use light more responsibly. Light pollution is a problem each of us can help solve. Together, we can bring back the dark of night to planet Earth. Turn it off now. So we made a discovery while that was playing that I want to share with everyone. Um, my my email exploded. It, it during this this I love all of you. You exploded my inbox. It's going to take me a few days to unbury. And so what I didn't notice until now is in addition to everything that you see having been donated on the thermometer. We also received $382.30 in Bitcoin. Um, so all of you who've donated your Bitcoin, thank you so much. Um, I love how people are finding every way possible to help support us during this fundraiser. Awesome. OK, so Connie, why don't you give us a background on, uh, on, on the video we just saw into the uh, losing the dark and uh, what you're going to be talking about. Well, Loose in the Dark was a, is a, um, a planetarium show that we put together with the International Dark Sky Association. And um, it's, been in, it's now in hundreds of planetaria all over the world and translated into eight different languages. And this is what you saw was the flat screen version. And it's, a, it's an attempt uh, to just you know, educate people on how uh, serious this problem is getting and how easily it can be solved. And, um, and what I want to offer you guys is um, I'm willing to give away three dark sky kits to the first three people that uh, contribute $100 to you guys, each $100. So if you have somebody that wants to call up um, between now and I guess the end of your <laughs> session in a couple of hours, um, we'd be happy to, to send out three dark sky kits, uh, one to each of the $100 contributors. And to show you what one thing is in those kits, if you don't mind me doing that. Yeah, um, go ahead. Okay, one of the prim primary things that you can use even uh, either as an educator, let me just try to get this down here, or um, as somebody who wants to go to their city council and convince them that they need to strengthen their lighting ordinances. This is something that's done at all ages. It's simply a um, city map. Uh, we have some cars uh, courtesy of my son. 
Um, and we have these little people that are trying to stand up at this point but falling over a little bit. And we have mag lights included in the kit uh, that serve as a street light or as a light source for a portable planetarium that I'll show you when the lights turn off in just a second. And what we attempt to do with this, this is a little bit brighter, I'll show you this one, um, is we, we try to teach why it's important to shield. And we don't show them the shield at first. It's this little item here. Uh, but we just alert. What's that? Spoiler alert. <laughs> oh, I'm sorry. Yeah, we what we do, um, well, I, I know I don't have too many minutes here. I didn't want to take too long showing this. But um, let me turn the lights off. And recently, my neighborhood, a historic neighborhood, replaced all the nice, dark sky, sensitive, downward facing street lights with these lights. Yeah. <laughs> We're not impressed. And yeah. it increased our property taxes. Oh my goodness. They're, they're beautiful, but they're not practical, typically. I don't like There shall be photo documentation of this. Yeah. Well, you can't, uh, because the computer's on right now, you're not really getting a good dark. Uh, you know, dark night sky view of what's going on, but uh, because of the light, you get too much glare, and it's lighting up everywhere but where you really need it, which is underneath. This is usually a much darker circle underneath here. Not typically so large in life, but uh, a little bit smaller because of the nature of the light and the pole underneath it. You get a, you cast a shadow, and um, it it proves to be unsafe, very unsafe for the situation here because you're not lighting up exactly where you need it, and also you're wasting energy. And we ask children typically when we do this in the classrooms. What do you do to make all the light go down? And after if they, they want to, you know, what do you think the first reply is in this instance? Pick the light up, flip it over. Yeah, they, they want to do this. But, and I think it doesn't that's work. Terrible. I love that, you know. But you can't, we're not super, you know, man or super, super boy or super girl. So, uh, so typically, you know, they finally get around to it. They, one kid brought over pizza and covered it to show what you could do. And then all the light, of course, went down. And then you could see that it's very effective, you know, it's where you need it, and then you talk about when you need it, that's, you know, so you have a curfew involved, um, and then how much you might need, because if you have more than one light, you may not, you know, need more than one light, you may just need one light. So there's different things involved here, but there's not only just how much light, but the kind of light. So say you did bring all the light down, now you can tell, you know, you can ask people, well, if I have all the light, twice as much light directed down, what can I actually do to that light bulb? So what do you think one answer might be? Turn it down. You can actually, that's right, that's what they would say. They would say you could turn it down, and that, you know, means if you had like a 200 watt light bulb, you could change it to half its value, so 100 watts. And then what would you save? You ask the audience, and you save energy, obviously, and cost. So it's a win-win it's a situation all around. And at that point, you can actually show them, um, you know, usually with a second um, mag, light, uh, mag light, but this one's kind of dim, actually. But I'll see if it works. If I turn this off, you can see that the mag light actually produces. No, maybe you can't. No, it's just illuminating the box, yeah. I'm afraid. No, that's right. So this, this has holes in it, about 100 holes that my students poke through. <laughs> in the, you know, the, uh, so the configuration of Orion and some other stars because we use Orion in the Globe at Night campaign that I'd just like to mention at the very end here. But so this kit and the, uh, with a lot of other um, dark skies related materials are in the are in the um, are in the dark skies education kit and we're very happy to send three of those out to the first three people that donate one hundred dollars to you in the next, you know, couple hours, if that's okay. So that's so this that. is once Jeff Knockham's uh, ended at uh, uh, at 5 p.m. Central, then Connie's kicked in, and these are fabulous teaching tools. Does this one have a dark sky meter in it? Uh, well, y yes, we can put a dark sky meter in it. Cool. So, so the dark sky meters allow you to quantitatively measure how much your neighbor's house illumination screws up your ability to see the sky. Um, there and, it is. And so the, this is uh, something that, that comes from Doug Welsh up in Canada. And uh, it's a great way to document how evil gas stations are. Um, and I'm referring to the lighting of the gas stations, which are these great islands of light oh, yeah. and admittedly sources of gas. But yeah. uh, the, the evils of the light is, is uh, <laughs> yes, a problem. Yeah. Uh, so th this is fabulous, Connie. Thank you so much. I know you are doing so much work with Globe at Night, which is another citizen science product 
project to get people out there and documenting what we're doing to our environment with lighting, how we're uh, starting to affect animals because of the light levels. You're measuring the light levels and others are working on the animal studies and together we're painting a picture of what we're doing and that once we know what we've done we can start to fix it. And uh, Guido Vibra points out that uh, he remembers Connie well from one of the first Learning Space Hangouts. We do this full demo. Uh, if you look back at the Learning Space archives on our YouTube channel Astrosphere Vids, uh, you can see the whole thing uh, the demo with this stuff. So yeah, the, so in this segment the first three people to donate a hundred dollars you're gonna get one of these kits with the light meter which will allow you uh, let me tell you I did one of my science fair projects on light pollution when I was in high school and I totally won first place and went to regionals so you can <laughs> use this for your science fair project which is really cool um, uh, so I'm trying to screen share this okay. yeah no we saw it oh you did okay yep oh. yep we, we just saw it so are you a, a fan of Game of Thrones Connie I am so you probably want to stay ta stay tuned in for our next segment. We're bringing on the cast of Beyond the Wall, and we're going to work to try and figure out what crazy astronomical things, what planetary orbits, what eccentricities and axial tilts might be responsible for the wandering seasons of Westeros. Oh, okay, um, can I just mention Globe at Night? I'm trying to yeah, get yeah. Go do. ahead. Uh, how do you make it the full screen? Uh, don't worry about it. This is the best way to see it. Okay. Yeah, um, full, for me, full screen just breaks it. Yeah, yeah. Don't do that. And how do you make it advance? Just by advance? Uh, just yeah, just go through on on the left hand bar there, and we'll see it in the main screen just like you do. Okay. Um, okay. Well, I'm not getting it to work this time. I guess. What I wanted to do is just talk about Globe at Night and that it's a citizen science campaign that people can participate. It's a worldwide campaign that starts um, usually in January and we're going to have it every month next year for 10 days each Ooh. month when the moon is not out. So I hope that people participate and uh, they can look at more information at www.globeatnight.org. That's about it. Awesome, awesome. So that's another great citizen science project. In addition to the light meters that you can get in the kit for donating for $100, um, there are lots of apps now for doing Globe at Night as well. Uh, you can use your smartphone um, for picking out the constellation, uh, picking out the stars that you need to do for Globe at Night, um, as well as some light meter. Well, uh, there's a light meter app, but I don't know uh, quite how that works, but there's a link in the... Um, in the event if you guys want to check that out. Uh, so there's the website that we're sharing for globeatnight.org. Uh, you guys easily reached your goal of uh, how many observations you needed to get for this last campaign. Is that 15,000? Yeah, and, and we have some coming from India, a couple thousand still to come from India. Wow. Can you actually see this now? Did I do this correctly or not? Can you see the dates? Uh, I, I see the map. Oh, really? The Globe at Night uh, world map. Well, that's funny. Oh, well, anyway, I have to get better at this. <laughs> All okay. right, you guys go on to your next thing that you have to do, and I really appreciate you allowing me to be on, um, and um, I, I'll stay tuned into Games of Thrones. Awesome. awesome.